the management. Uh, before I'm going to move to the substantive part of the webinar, uh, due to the fact that I don't see you and I don't uh, hear this is like in the construction of the webinars, and um, please tell me if everything is okay from the perspective of the quality. So if you can see me, uh, if you can hear me and the quality is okay. So I would need some information, I guess, on chat. I see there is some kind of comment. Okay, I can see that everything is okay. Uh, if it is about the, the topic of uh, today's webinar, it is going to be presented fully in English. So I guess that we will uh, be able to have two things at once, because we are not only going to discuss the topic of diversity management, which is lately very popular one, especially also within the last two years during pandemic, that we are working a little bit more on that topic. And I guess that it will be also quite uh, beneficial because I'm going to use English. So, in fact, uh, killing two, two birds with one stone at the same time. Um, if it is to the agenda of uh, today's meeting, we are going to concentrate on the most important aspects of diversity. So uh, I'm going definitely to start with the um, initial part of diversity. So understanding definition of diversity and of course concentrating on different kind of aspects of understanding of that particular topic. We are definitely also going to move to the benefits uh, connected with diversity and uh, how both company and employees can benefit from the introduction of diversity in the company. Although we are also going to talk a little bit about any kind of risks and problems uh, connected with improper incorporation of diversity into the organization. And finally, I'm going also to tell a little bit about different kind of initiatives which can be introduced by the company when we are talking about diversity. And before I move on to this uh, substantive part um, of the presentation of the webinar, uh, let me also please tell uh, you a few words about myself and about my professional experience. Uh, so if it comes to my professional story, it's uh, from the very beginning of my work connected strictly with the human resources area. Uh, so I was uh, always responsible for designing and incorporating uh, HR strategies and HR processes. Uh, I was doing that not only in the Polish market, but also in the international ones, as especially in my previous uh, company, I had the function of the HR head responsible, again, not only from the Polish market, but also for around 20 divisions all over the world. And uh, that was always connected with in diversity management, especially that in my previous company, uh, I was uh, strongly involved uh, in the development of the company and a lot of mobility programs. And that was connected always with transferring employees, managers to different kind of locations with different kind of cultures and nationalities. So one of the most important topics was always connected with diversity management, with multicultural communication and collaboration to make sure that with such international environment, people are going to be just able to collaborate, cooperate and understand how important it is to have various and diverse environments to benefit more from that kind of collaboration and communication. Apart from the fact that I have been working in human resources area, I'm also a business trainer, I'm ICF coach, I run trainings mainly connected with business topics like communication, like management, but something what I additionally do, and in fact this is also the reason why uh, you can hear me today speaking English, uh, it's about running different kind of business English courses connected with various specializations in which I have my working experience. So I run courses, for example, for human resources, for trainers, for coaches, for managers, everything was what is a combination of English and of course of my practical experience. And from that introduction, let me already move to the definition of diversity management. And if I were to concentrate on the definition which I particularly like or appreciate, it's that for me, diversity, this is the strategy of recruiting, of hiring and managing people from different kind of backgrounds, having different personalities, different kind of characteristic and give different kind of traits. Uh, it's about hiring and managing people having 
very diff different attitudes, approaches to work, professional approaches, of course, to work and competences. And this is the reason why I would say that something what should be even most crucial if we're talking about diversity management, uh, it should be not only about all the internal characteristics like race, ethnicity or age, but I would definitely say that the biggest benefit or the biggest value which I can see in diversity management, it's really about competences, it's about personal interests and uh, it's about different kind of personal qualities that we have. And it should be the core understanding, at least again for me, of course, of diversity management. Because this is how we can benefit if we have that particular process in place that we will know what kind of competences we have in the company. We will know how to apply these competences. We will know how diverse competences, how various competences can be applied to develop business and develop people more. And I can admit that to some extent I have a little bit idealistic approach in that understanding because I would really love to believe that it doesn't matter what gender somebody will have or what nationality or what age somebody will have. It's really about competences, about engagement and potential to make sure that the company and employees can develop more. But I guess, again, it's a little bit about my idealistic approach. And I would really love to have that kind of situations in all of the markets that we don't care about age, we don't care about gender, we don't care about sexual orientation, any kind of internal characteristics that can cause any kind of stereotypes and any kind of discrimination, because we are mainly concentrated on that aspects which are connected with our, again, potential and skills. But on the other hand, probably if we are thinking about that idealistic approach, I could use a little bit against my approach, some kind of example, which I believe is very valuable, showing that uh, if it is about diversity management, it's not only about even I would say conscious discrimination, but it's also about using different kind of unconscious bias, uh, which I believe I would even assume every of us can have, but again, it can happen really unconsciously. Because most probably, if we think about any kind of professional or private situation, it can happen that, let's say, we're employing a new employee in the company, and this person will go to the company's canteen, kitchen, any kind of place where there is like a coffee corner, and I can assume that to some extent it is possible that if that person is going to enter that particular place and let's say we'll want to ask about coffee, about location of the cups and so on, and there will be two people standing in that kitchen, man and woman, I guess that some of these new employees would automatically ask a woman where coffee or cups are. And that would be, in fact, about unconscious bias, that not necessarily because of willingness to discriminate or to assume something, we are going to ask that kind of questions about coffee or cups, but it can be really about some kind of unconscious bias and some kind of unconscious associations, like coffee, kitchen, and women. The same could happen in different kinds of situations. So let's assume that I'm also, let's say, in the company, and I have some problem with any kind of application on my phone, and I would, again, approach a group of people, and there would be the person who is younger and the person who is older. And I guess that in some examples, it can again happen that if I'm going to approach those uh, two people, because of the problem with my application, unfortunately, autom automatically, I'm going to ask this younger person to support me with the application. And again, it can be about unconscious bias that automatically, subconsciously, I'm going to assume, okay, younger person, so probably this is the person who is quite advanced in any kind of technological things. And the example which is coming even from the market connected with that either discrimination or unconscious bias, I would say it's about both of these things in that case. Uh, that's the example 
quite old in the market because that's the example coming from the 1970s. And this is the example uh, coming from the New York Philharmonic. There was a situation in the 1970s that uh, that particular Philharmonic, they were accused of discrimination. They were accused of discrimination against the race and against gender. And because of that particular situation, uh, not only that Philharmonic, but the other ones in the US as well, they started thinking about any kind of changes that could be incorporated even during the recruitment process to minimize the risk of any kind of discrimination. And what was done, first of course, in that particular Philharmonic, was that they decided on bl blind auditions and how it worked in practice. It was working this way that instead of having the auditions where people who were participating in those auditions, they were visible. Uh, this Philharmonic did it this way that people were behind the curtain. So it wasn't visible when you were participating in the audition. If you're a man, woman, what race, what age you are, it was rather concentrated or in fact only concentrated on your skills. So people who were running this recruitment process, they were just hearing and listening to the participants of the recruitment process. And based on that, so based only on the audible, let's say, reflections, they were making their decisions. And of course, after that, it was verified what was the difference in the employment. And I would say it was really quite high. Because what occurred was, I'm sorry for my voice, give me a moment. That dry throat. <clears throat> so what occurred was that, uh, in that, again, in that particular Philharmonic, uh, before introduction of these blind auditions, blind auditions, 6% uh, of the roles were covered by women and 50% of the chairs were covered by women after introduction of blind auditions. So I guess that the difference is really huge. And it was only about that, only about the change in the recruitment process itself. Um, after some time, in fact, not long ago, because it was in 2020, the whole concept, which is still valid, if it, we are talking about auditions in the Philharmonic, it was a little bit uh, considered again, uh, because the numbers which you can see here and the numbers which I presented, they are strictly connected with gender. Although from the perspective of ethnic groups, from the nationality, from the race perspective, nothing that much changed. And I remember that when I was reading about that particular example connected with that blind uh, auditions, I had also that kind of the reflection, like what can we do and how we can understand diversity management. And I sometimes have that kind of feeling that instead of being concentrated strictly on that real aspects like potential competences, education, experience, we're going to a little bit more extreme path and thinking about a different kind of parity connected with just checking the numbers, how many men, how many women we have, or what kind of races or what kind of nationalities we have. And it can result, unfortunately, in some kind of risks that instead of thinking, OK, let's employ the person who really has the potential and competences. And instead of that, we can unfortunately think, OK, we have two people of let's say different kind of competences, but at the same time, at the back of our head, we have in mind there is diversity management. So in fact, we should employ a little bit more women or a little bit more people from particular race. And that's the risk for me. And when I, when I was reading about this example of blind auditions, it was also one of my reflections. Because in 2020, when um, those whole recruitment processes, they were considered and discussed again, there was that kind of the question that right now, these blind auditions, they don't work anymore. Because if we are thinking only about this time, the aspect of race and nationality, only less than 2% 
of the total employees, they are of black. So there was a question, does this particular recruitment process still works if still we have that kind of minorities? And here, that was my question, in fact, really, and my question mark on maybe even, uh, is it really equal that uh, even if with blind additions, we are going to concentrate really only on that competences and potential. And on the other hand, there will be information, okay, they are not enough particular races and ethnical groups. Shall we change it just based on numbers and reports? And this is something that I believe shouldn't happen, that it should be really concentrated on the criteria based on competences and potential. On the other hand, if we're talking about that full aspect of diversity, so not only the one connected with that internal, but also external criteria, like competences, interests, of course, and the potential of the employees. Uh, I was lately reading also the study, which is in fact run every year by the consulting company from US, by McKinsey. And they are checking the effect of those kind of companies, which have diversity management on a very high level and they are really concentrated on uh, various groups of employees being incorporated into the company. And the latest study, which was run two years ago, showed that if it is about just job performance, so our effectiveness, our capacity at work, if the company is going to have diverse teams, and those diverse teams have quite wide understanding. So it's again, not only about that internal, but also external characteristics. So if it is about the job performance, uh, it works this way that companies having diverse teams in place, they will have 35% higher performance than the ones of homogeneous teams. The same, if it is about the revenue of the company. So I would say like really important aspect because it is the economic aspect. And here it works this way that if we compare the companies with diverse versus non-diverse culture, it works this way <coughs> that uh, the revenue can be 20% higher again if we compare diverse versus non-diverse cultures. I need a zip of tea. Please give me a second again. So I believe that it really shows how important it is if we're talking about having these diverse uh, teams. Although in reality, if we concentrate on a different kind of aspects connected with that natural discrimination, we can see that not necessarily it works. Because even if I have a look only, let's say on the gender, uh, if it is about, for example, the Polish market, it works this way that from top managers, only 50% of women they are on top managerial positions. And on the other hand, if we see the benefits and if we check how important it is to have this gender equality, of course, again, based on competences and potential in place and how it can benefit and how it can result in the performance of the company, it works this way that if we're only talking about gender, having in place 50-50, regulation, uh, it can increase the revenue of the company by 40%. So I guess that it's really worth to, to just consider what kind of diversity aspects we have in the company in place. I would also say that if we're talking about the benefits that can be connected strictly with the introduction of diversity hiring, I would during the fact that I, of course, work in HR, I would definitely start from considering employees and how they can benefit from having diversity in place. And here I would say that most important aspect, if we have people coming from different backgrounds, different experiences, different competences, will be that they will be able to develop in the company more. Because what is going to happen if I'm going to have these diverse teams is that I will be able to have, of course, different kind of tasks, sometimes strategic tasks, sometimes probably analytical tasks, operational ones, and so on. 
And if I'm going to have people with different competences and different potential and different preferences, what I can do is that I can incorporate that kind of tasks and projects that will be really aligned with the potential and preferences of my teams. Something what I can say that I'm really in favor of uh, is the process or maybe like program connected with job swapping and how it can work. It can work this way that if I have a team and I will know that I have in my team people of different, uh, uh, of different preferences, education, experience and so on, I can do it this way that I will have the whole basket of tasks and of course different ones more creative, more analytical, and so on. And in that job swapping, I can do it this way that, for example, once per week, I'm going to meet my team. We're going to talk about all the tasks, all the projects to be done for this particular week, and we are going to list them. And in job swapping, there will be a decision who wants to do what kind of task based on the preferences and of course, I will, as a manager, also know what kind of potential and what kind of strengths they will have. So finally, the result will be working this way, that I will know, okay, there is one person who has very strong analytical skills. So from the whole basket of the task, that particular task can move to that person. I will also know that I have a person who is strictly concentrated on creativity. So any kind of, let's say, in my branch, employer branding actions, they could work for that person. So again, from the whole bunch of tasks, I can assign that one to this person. So introduction of job swapping, it can be something which can uh, definitely promote diversity culture. And I would say that also if we just start from that kind of understanding of diversity. So just really thinking about competences, about potential, about preferences of people. And for example, we're going to incorporate that kind of job swapping. It will also change a little bit the culture and the way of thinking in the company. And then automatically, if we're going to be more open for even switching the tasks, we are going also to be more open from people from different kind of backgrounds. So from incorporation of that external characteristics, automatically the culture of the company is going to become more and more open. And then it really won't matter for me if I have in the company the person which is disabled or capable or not, because I will just not pay attention for that, because generally I'm going to work in that kind of culture, which is just open for any kind of differences and will appreciate them. If it is also about the um, other benefits of diversity, I would say that something what is very, very important is that if I have people from different kind of backgrounds, I can also benefit both as a business and as employees and managers, of course, as well. I can benefit from that this way that I will have multidimensional perspectives. Because having people from different backgrounds, of course, again, external, internal, I can concentrate on meeting different kind of needs of my clients. Because if I have international company, and let's say I will have clients from all over the world, and I will have people not only with various competences, but also the people who are going to be from different backgrounds. So like a person from US, from China, and different kind of nationalities, it will also result this way that I will be more able to meet different kind of myths of my clients and I will understand them better. And it is something strictly connected with the dynamics of the market and the last two years. Because right now it really works this way that no matter if we have the office formally located in Poland or maybe in any other country, uh, we can employ people from different backgrounds. And it really doesn't matter right now. If in my Polish division, I have the person who is from Poland, Nepal, China, India, or whatever other country, because still we are a team, we can work remotely. It, it is also concentrated on disabilities, that right now, even if somebody is disabled, 
there is no problem with, of course, entering the office. I can just ensure that kind of environment and that kind of conditions that will favor different kind of aspects and different kind of diversities. And if I work in that kind of dynamic environment with having a lot of people from different backgrounds, automatically it means that most probably I also have clients from different backgrounds and I can assign proper people with proper understanding, with different kind of skills, with different kind of, uh, again, background, who are going to meet those different kind of needs of my clients. Diversity management, of course, is not only connected with meeting all that I would call them like soft aspects, because if we're talking about development, if we're thinking about talent management, if we're thinking about even satisfaction of the employees, um, it's not only connected with that, again, like soft aspect, but it's also concentrated even with the results of the companies. And quite frequently, it happens that expectation from the market, from various stakeholders, it can be about expectations of the clients, it can be the, about the expectations of the governments in different kind of institutions, is that they want to cooperate with companies which are just very open, adaptable and flexible. And one of the criteria showing that we are that kind of the company will be the criteria of diversity. So it can work this way that in the company, one of the reasons why we want to be even more open and why we want to meet the criteria of our clients more will be connected with diversity. Because then we are going to incorporate the culture again based on openness, based on respect and my potential clients seeing that this is really my environment and my culture will know, okay, so if it is that kind of the company, which is very open, most probably when I'm going to initiate cooperation with them, they will be also more flexible. They will be just very focused on meeting my needs, any kind of changes, there will be adaptability in place. So, okay, they have diversity management in place. So it is something that I as a client will benefit from. In fact, even if we have a look as, at the most prominent companies uh, in the market, uh, both from the client perspective and also from the employee perspective, I guess that we can see one aspect which is strictly combining uh, approach to employees and employee satisfaction plus client satisfaction versus diversity. I believe that probably you know that very popular lately indicator which started being used in sales and marketing but it became also very popular lately in um, human resources in managing people. Uh, so that's the indicator which is called NPS, Net Promoter Score. And that's like very famous indicator lately connected with checking satisfaction of the employees uh, from their work because this is the kind of the indicator which is answering the question how probable it is that you, my dear employee, would recommend our company to your friends or family. And if we are thinking about the companies which have this particular indicator on a very high place, one of them, US-based company, it is the company which is called um, HubSpot. And if you have a look at that company, in fact, they have right now the highest score uh, if we're talking about NPS, so HubSpot. Um, and if you have a look at the different kind of initiatives which this uh, particular company is introducing, uh, one of them, again, is connected with diversity management. So what they do is that each year they are preparing and uh, publishing their report on diversity in which they are showing very transparently and very clearly what kind of groups, different ones, not only of course connected again with age or race or gender, what kind of groups they have and what is the percentage of one versus another groups.
Uh, something, for example, what they report will be connected with the parental status. So as far as I know, around 24% of employees working in that company in HubSpot, these are people who are parents. So they are very transparent in showing what kind of diverse groups they employ and of course what kind of initiatives they incorporate to make sure that those particular groups are going to feel comfortable in the company. And I would also mention here one more aspect which is going to affect strongly again business and employees as well. Because if we're thinking about diversity management, one of the initiatives, which is very popular in the market, uh, it's connected with um, creating and introducing different kind of community groups. So the groups for people of different kind of genders, different kind of races, and so on. And I would say that something what is really, really crucial uh, for any kind of person, not only employee, but for any kind of person, this is the feeling of belonging and this is the feeling of being respected. And if in the company we're going to introduce that kind of communities, automatically people feel, okay, there is that kind of group for me because I'm a woman and I can participate in, in that group, of course, if I want. So automatically, even in, if in the past I was feeling discriminated, I didn't have even like high level of self-esteem because of different kind of reasons when i'm going to participate and when i'm going to belong to that particular community group i'm going to feel okay this is like my community i can belong to that but there are also a lot of different ones so i can switch to the other ones as well and then my feeling of being respected, my feeling of belonging to the company and seeing that the company really introduced different kind of initiatives to make me feel good inside. That feeling is going to raise and the result will be that I'm more satisfied, I'm more happy in the company and my loyalty is rising. So the even automatic result for the business itself will be related to the, to the retention because if i'm going to have employees who are satisfied who are going to feel loyal automatically it's easier for me to keep them in the company and with that community groups it is something what can happen on the other hand if we're talking about diversity management, it can happen also that it will be a little bit misunderstood. And I can admit that I have and I had that kind of examples that diversity as a process, as a strategy, as a mindset, it was introduced into the companies, but in a little bit improper way. To some extent, I would say it can be connected with the fact that some kind of processes, especially when we're talking about international companies, they are just copied and pasted and transferred from one division to another in exactly the same way. And I met that kind of situations that uh, if there was international company, most probably with headquarters based in US, and that company was really very much in favor of diversity management. And this diversity was like even ingrained in the culture and values. And that company was introducing diversity management also in the European market, in Polish market. They wanted to transform all the initiatives and processes really exactly the same. And I would say that it even shouldn't be like done, done like that because we have to consider also like local aspects. Even if we're having a look at the US market and Polish market from the demographic perspective, I guess that having a lot of community groups in US, for example, the ones which are going to be strictly connected with ethnic group and nationality, yeah, it's possible because of the society. 
because we have really a huge variety of different kinds of nations in the US. So it's even physically, I would say, possible to introduce that kind of community groups and then to check the parity, like how many people from different kind of national groups we have in the company. At the same time, in Polish market, on to one extent, from the perspective of the last two years, yes, it is changing because we have more and more foreigners and we have people from different kind of cultures and nations. So we can definitely see that the disparity of Polish people versus the other nations, it is finally changing. But still, it is not so developed as in US market. And not because we don't want to, it's just because we don't have so many people from so different nations as it works in US or in some West European countries. This is the reason why I would say that always when we are introducing any kind of initiative uh, connected with diversity management, we just have to check how it works, again, even from this physical perspective in the given market to be sure that if we want to incorporate diversity management, or in fact, any other process, it is going to meet the local needs and we are going to be clear about the goals that we want to achieve. So not only preparing reports and checking what is the percentage, but how we are going to benefit from incorporation of that particular process. If not, so if it is done in improper way, introduction of diversity management, there are some risks. And one of them is going to be connected with something what can be called tokenism. What is it? That would be the situation that the company, knowing that there is that kind of expectation even in the market of being diverse, is going to employ in the company people from the minorities. Uh, so people who are going to be who are going to belong to underrepresented groups. But the reason why the company is going to do it, it will be in fact not because they want to and they appreciate the candidate, but rather because that's the expectation. So the company will check, okay, what numbers we have, how many people from what kind of groups do we have? And just really based on that, they are going to employ the person who belongs to one of the minority groups Again, because this is that kind of the trend. And it can even work this way, that if it happens that way, let's say I know that generally in my company, I have a lot of people, let's say white people, and I'm going to decide, okay, I want to incorporate this diversity management strategy. I don't feel it, but okay, there is that kind of expectations in the market, so let me just do it. So I would think, okay, so that would be probably perfect to employ the person from any other race or any other nation. Let me then just do it. And I'm going to employ like one person, two people, three people. I'm going even to put them at the front of the company doing some kind of, I know, social strategy or social campaign uh, to show that I'm really oriented on the um, diverse management and I'm going to put these people first. So I'm going to employ, for example, the front desk assistant, which is going to be from like some different kind of nation. And I'm going to show, yeah, I'm so diverse oriented, which of course is not true because I just did it because I know that there is that kind of expectation from the market or from my headquarters. And I guess that if it works this way, that this strategy is not the real one, but a little bit fake, I would say. So we are going to have this tokenism in place, disaster, because it will bring no benefits, in fact, to anybody. Unfortunately, it can then result in even higher level of, I would say, even isolation, that the person who is going to be employed in the company from this, any kind of minority group, they are just going to be, uh, they are just going to feel really unwelcome in the company. They are going to feel isolated, most probably if it is about other people from that particular group. They are going also to some extent scrutinize this particular person. The people in the company 
like from again different kind of groups most probably they will be also to some extent discriminating this person because there was no fairness in in such kind of employment so the company unfortunately with having that tokenism in place can lose really a lot another improper incorporation of the diversity management can be connected with so-called positive discrimination and unfortunately i can admit that when i was working in the us i met that situation sometimes that there were even during the recruitment process in some companies that kind of criteria that even if we have people with different kind of competences we are going to check their education we are going to check the experience and so on but at the same time at the back of our head we know all the parities so like how big percentage of different kind of especially races we are going to have in the company and nationalities there was some kind of um, i would even say preference to employ the person from this minority group even though that person was not so competent as the other candidates. And that's the example of positive discrimination, that we are going to favor some minority group, some underrepresented group, only because of having that particular characteristics. And again, this is something for me what shouldn't happen. Although on the other hand, I also believe that it's very difficult just to check if during for example the recruitment process we have this discrimination or do we have equal treatment because if we wanted to done it in a really perfect way it should work this way that i would have two candidates exactly the same competences education experience so from the perspective of my criteria they would be really equal and it's really difficult to say it because always there will be some kind of even personal differences. But if it worked equally and fairly, I would have to have employees of exactly the same competences. And then if my criteria is that, OK, I still have those two candidates, but one of them is from underrepresented group, I have the right to employ this person from underrepresented group. But because of the fact that deciding that we have exactly the same candidates, I would say it's almost impossible. It can be a little bit uh, difficult, either from the discrimination or unfortunately also from this positive discrimination perspective as well. And then if we're moving also to different kind of initiatives that can be introduced into the, in the company to make sure that we are going to have this, uh, I would say, fair uh, diversity management in place. I believe that something what should be uh, on the top of any kind of rules and initiatives, uh, it should be about doing that in voluntary way. So we are incorporating the process of diversity management, not because headquarters like international company wanted us to do it, but we as a company, as business, as managers, as employees, we are aware that here we can really benefit from incorporation of that diversity. And something what can be helpful here uh, into introducing the diversity process it would be definitely about making everything in the company very transparent. Because this is how the company can create the, that kind of environment in which diversity will be just natural, not incorporated because somebody imposed that, but just really natural. So I would say that if in the company we have very clear information about organizational structure, so like what departments, what teams, what positions, what responsibilities we have in the company, what competences we require from our employees, then that will be the signal to employees, okay, if there is transparency in sharing information about responsibilities, about um, talent management roles, about needed required competences, it means that there is no discrimination and no stereotypes. Because I know 
that if I meet certain criteria, again, no matter what gender, race, nationality I'm going to have, I can be employed or I can be promoted in the company. So it's about transparency. Another thing which I would say it's very important to promote this natural diversity, it's about incorporating any kind of diverse processes. For example, if it is about career paths and development. And what do I mean by that? Traditionally, if we're thinking about advancements, about promotions, we're rather thinking about the vertical ones. So what can we do in the company to make sure that somebody will be promoted to higher positions? And it is our traditional thinking. So in diversity management, we have to introduce that kind of the processes which will be like out of the box and they will promote this multidimensional thinking and multidimensional perspectives. So not only concentration on diversity from the people perspective, but processes as well. So, for example, what I can do if we're thinking about talent management is to introduce just a lot of or a variety of different kinds of uh, career path developments. So, what I'm going to do is not only to think about this typical vertical promotion, but I'm going to definitely introduce some kind of horizontal promotions. So I'm going to encourage my employees to promote it to different positions, to different kind of departments, checking not if they have some particular experience in that area, but rather if they have potential and interests. So if I work right now in HR and I would like to check my skills and uh, my potential in finance and I have predispositions, yeah, go ahead. I can think about some kind of initiatives like job rotation. So I will be working for some time in my role, then I'm going to switch to another role for some time. Longer, shorter, but generally to have that kind of variety. Or I'm going to participate in different kind of swaps. So for example, there will be that kind of a program in my company that once per month or once per week, I can move to another department and learn a little bit about the tasks and even perform the tasks in that particular department. So if I'm going to check different kind of tasks, different kind of perspectives, different kind of competences, automatically I will be more open for something what is not natural and standard for me. And then automatic again consequence will be that I will be more open for any kind of thing which is not typical, standard and traditional for me. So even by incorporation of that kind of processes, automatically acceptance for the diversity will be much higher. So it's something what is definitely connected with the culture of the company. I can of course check uh, in my company how uh, introduction of that kind of processes will impact the organization from the employee and business per perspective so if I'm going just to introduce more, di more diverse groups, people, individuals, uh, and I want to check the effects, uh, the method to do it will be definitely connected with job satisfaction. So if I'm introducing in my company different kind of, of course, satisfaction service, and uh, I'm going to have there also some kind of questions connected with diversity and inclusion, and even lately, we can see that uh, if we're talking about this NPS, so N Net Promoter Score, there is already the new version connected only with diversity and inclusion. And it is something what is already also being uh, checked. So how employees perceive diversity and inclusion. So I can check job satisfaction. I can check also performance of my employees. Because again, I really strongly believe that if we're going to introduce the tasks which are aligned with these preferences and competences and potential of the employees, automatically performance will be just higher. So this job swapping, it can be something very useful. Uh, if it is about the company, uh, how it is of course done internationally is that I can check the impact on the revenue. 
And because of the fact that I mentioned that usually it's also the expectations of various stakeholders, like clients, of course, and investors mostly, uh, how I can, of course, also check if my uh, if my position in the market is higher, is that I can check my, of course, stock ratings as well. So even from the perspective of some kind of transform transformation merges, if I'm going to have incorporated this natural diversity management, my scores on the stock can go up as well. And uh, something again from the initiatives or the further initiatives connected with um, diversity management, uh, connected maybe from we were connected maybe with the initial process of uh, diversity management. If we can have a look at the first point, which I can uh, which we can see here in the presentation, it will be related to the recruitment process. And according to the um, survey done by Glassdoor, it works this way that two out of three candidates seek companies that have diverse workforce. And they, of course, really check it. If it is not only some kind of social campaign, but does it really work this way? So they are checking really if diversity management is in place. So what can we do from the perspective of the recruitment process to make sure that that process is going to minimize as much as possible any kind of possible discrimination. It can then work this way, that I'm going to introduce uh, the process which uh, is going to increase anonymity. Because unfortunately, it works this way, especially when we, are just, when we are just talking about the initial stage of getting to know somebody, that this unconscious bias automatically appears not only in recruitment, but I would say everywhere. That when we are getting to know somebody, before we even start speaking with the person, we just check somebody, have a look, and some kind of bias comes. It's natural, unfortunately, and it's even connected with the construction of our brain. So in the recruitment process, as this is this first contact and first impression, we can do something to make sure that the process is going to be at least at the beginning, of course, as anonymous as possible to minimize this unconscious bias. What I can then do is that I can introduce blind CV. So no information about, for example, gender, about the age, to make sure that I'm not going to have that kind of association. Oh, the person is too young or too old or any other, of course, thinking. I can also do it this way in the process of recruitment that I can introduce a different kind of verification criteria, like, for example, work samples or preparation of some kind of case study. And again, when candidates are going to send it to me, there will be no information about any kind of, for example, demographic data. So I'm going to get the result of this work sample of that particular case study, some kind of task which the person is going to do. And based on that, I'm going just to see, okay, am I really transparent? And luckily, I didn't use any kind of bias. So it can be another thing what I'm going to do. Something what can work also, it will be connected with the structured interview. Because if I'm going to use the structured interview, so based on exactly the same questions and criteria for assessment during the recruitment, again, especially at the very beginning of the process, I will know that I have that kind of transparency, that every candidate who is going to participate uh, in my recruitment process, they are going to be assessed in exactly the same way. And what I can do further is that even if I'm going to collect all the results from that structured interview, or in fact, any kind of interview, and I will have the criteria. These are the competences which I'm looking for. That's the experience which I'm looking for. And I'm going to prepare myself some kind of report on that assessment. I'm again going to skip the information about any kind of demographic data. So I will have like candidate one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Then all the criteria, I will compare experience, competences, and so on. And again, my bias, my discrimination possibility is limited because I'm not having a look at any kind of demographic data. 
Another thing which can be incorporated if we're talking about recruitment process, it is definitely about using artificial intelligence because here I would say that this unconscious bias or any kind of discrimination, not only it is limited, but it just does not exist because the verification, the screening is going to be done by the computer, by intelligence, not by people who can have automatically this unconscious bias. And one more thing from the perspective of uh, managing people and introducing different kind of processes which will favor diversity. I would say that we can think about any kind of action, any kind of initiative, which is out of the box. For example, if I'm thinking about mentoring, most typically it works this way that mentoring is connected with seniority. So I have senior experienced employees in my company and automatically because even of the age, because seniority will be automatically connected with age, they are going to be mentors for juniors, for, uh, for younger people. So what I can introduce in the company just to, um, again, think out of the box and not to assume automatically mentoring older person is that I can introduce so-called reverse brainstorming. And that would be the situation that the group, which is normally not mentor, or they, don't, they aren't mentors, they will become them. So that would mean that, for example, some juniors, some people who are, for example, younger, they are going to become mentors, maybe on a different kind of that would be also a little bit like bias, but let me say it, maybe, for example, on introduction and training on different kind of technologies or any other aspect not to make this unconscious uh, bias. So I can incorporate that kind, of, uh, that kind of actions, that kind of processes, which are out of the box because they will promote diversity, definitely. And I guess that if it is about that introduction to diversity, uh, I will finish with that. Uh, just emphasizing again that I really strongly believe that if it is about diversity, it should be done in that natural way, that we're promoting competences, we're promoting potential of the employees, their preferences. We are incorporating the culture, which is strictly connected with respect, with openness for the other people. And if we have that kind of processes, automatically open us also for all these internal aspects like race, gender, sexual orientation and so on. It will be just automatic, natural and ingrained in the culture of the company and people as well. If you want to read a little bit more about different kind of initiatives connected with diversity, I can uh, for sure recommend uh, the ranking which is done by Measure Up and it verifies different kind of actions done by the companies which, has, which, are, which are said to be the most diverse. So you have the list of the companies here. Uh, of course, if you wish, we can after the webinar send to you the presentation so that you could have all the materials. So the list of these companies will be also there. And to finish also with, uh, with that topic, uh, if you're going to be interested in any further webinars, run, run in fact both in English and in Polish, connected with different kind of aspects of business. Uh, so connected with management, connected with the presentations, connected with human resources. Uh, I can definitely invite you to that kind of webinars because we have that kind of rule that once per month we are running that kind of webinar uh, connected with different kind of topics. So today we are talking about um, diversity management. Last time we were talking a little bit more about elevator pitch for the purpose of presentations. There was also the webinar connected with the role of HR in the company. So different kind of topics connected with uh, with business. Uh, you will get from us uh, after the webinar, the newsletter and the information just to make sure that you're going to know when and where and what kind of topic of webinars we are introducing. And if you wish, you can also follow our fan pages 
especially from the perspective, I would say, of expanding business knowledge and English knowledge as well, because something what we do on both of these fan pages, which you can see here, uh, is connected with um, different kind of vocabulary, articles and podcasts that we share just for free. So if you don't, so if you want to, in fact, minimize your effort, put into English and business expansion, you can just use this and uh, get all the content, of course, for free. And something also at the very end about the um, further attractions that we are going to organize. Uh, we concentrate mainly on different kinds of courses and trainings. So the ones that we're going to initiate in the nearest future, I guess in February or maybe in March, they will be connected with running a course for HR masters with a lot of conversations regarding the challenges in HR. There will be also a training connected with managers and uh, the labor law introduction for international managers, uh, plus the topic about running recruitment processes, and that will be a training, and also the course for managers, English for managers. If you are interested, of course, follow our website. You can also, of course, contact us uh, to our email. So in case of any kind of questions, doubts, worries, reflections, please go ahead. And of course, still, we will share with you the information about that free content as well. Thank you very much for being there today with me. And I hope to see you in the nearest future.